Okay, welcome back. We are looking at statistical inference. Last part, we had looked at some number theory involving combinations and how we can use number combinations to work out some probabilities. So let's apply some of that idea to this particular example. So we've got year 12 maths methods class consisting of 12 girls and 9 boys so we've got two different types of observed or outcomes in our population and we're after a group of four students so that sounds like a sample to me and that's to be selected at random to represent the school at an inter-school maths competition how fun all right so first off part a what is the value of p now remember p was the population parameter okay it was the the proportion of an observed outcome in the population and we want to know what is proportion of girls in the class okay so what do you think well there are 12 girls how many are in the class altogether all right so there we go we've got a population proportion of 12 out of 21 in the class which is this proportion amount okay so now I've set up what's called a probability table because in the probability table we're going to um, record some information such as part B what could be the possible values of the sample proportion P hat now the sample is four students in size so how many girls could appear in a particular sample well you could have zero girls, you could have one girl, two girls, three girls, or you could have four girls. So that gives you, if we say x is being a random variable here, the number of girls in the sample, then x can have all these particular numbers. And that corresponds to this as a sample proportion. This is zero out of four, one out of four, two out of four, which is a half, three out of four, and one, four out of four. Okay, so our sample proportion has these different types of values. How is those values distributed? What is uh, what we're interested in is thinking about what's the corresponding probability for each. So we're going to think about using our counting theory of combinations to come up with how many samples we could get that has a sample proportion of zero or how many samples we could get that has a sample proportion of, of one quarter and if we take that as a fraction out of the total number of samples we get our relative frequency and our relative frequency we're going to use to estimate our probability all right so here we go so there we go we've got the two types of observed um, outcomes in our probability girls and boys so as you can see here 12 girls in the population but we're drawing zero of them so what's the combination of that occurring well that's only one all right then multiply by well if we're drawing zero girls we're obviously drawing four boys so this is the number of combination of getting any four boys out of a possible nine in the co in the population all right so it's 126 and so on and what you'll notice is that the first uh, combination calculation is all for the girls okay so as the number of girls in the sample increase the one and then two then three then four then we're interested to know what is the combination of now one girl out of 12 and two go out of 12 three go out of 12 and as we get one girl we obviously are going to have three boys so what's the combination of getting three boys out of nine and then if we've got two girls we've also got two boys so you can notice the pattern in these numbers as the number of girls go up the number of boys goes down and here gives us all the total number of samples for which such um, can be occurred such outcomes can be observed so here's our total number of samples at the moment and that's always bigger now what are the relative frequencies so this is formed by doing a division the number of samples divided by the total okay so 126 divide 5985 as a simple fraction 2 out of 95 and so on we've done that for each we've taken the number of samples divide by the total number of samples divide by the total and we get our relative frequencies so that's 
an estimate for the probability, the probability of observing our um, sample proportions. And you can see it has its own probability density. Okay, it's got its own distribution. Now, what, what can we do with this? Well, we can think about what is the average value. What's the expected sample proportion? All right, well, the expected sample proportion is the, the expectation value on X. Or we could think about the expected value on P, hat being the sample proportion. That's what we're after. And that can be equivalent here, but we'll have to divide by the total number of samples we have at the end. <clears throat> okay. So this calculation gives us something similar to this, <coughs> where we take the relative frequency and we multiply by the corresponding sample proportion. So this times this plus, this times this plus, this times this, and so on. What do you think will be our expected value? We get this number. Now this number is in fact the same as this one, and this is our population proportion. This is our P. So the expected value of P hat is the same as P. Interesting. Well, let's consider, we, I was saying that the relative frequency only approximates the probabilities. So, what do you think you need in order to get more exact? Exact probability amounts. Well, you've got to think about as the total number increases and increases and increases, so the more samples we possibly get, then the relative frequency is going to trend towards a theoretical probability. Yeah? All right. Well, the total number of samples can only really increase if we get a larger population. Let's look at that. So let's look at the case of large populations. Well, large populations... First off, it's on the assumption that the sample is drawn from a large population, and that's very important. Okay, we're going to make a connection for the distribution of p-hat, and it's based on the assumption that we're drawing from a very large population. So, this is a, a fundamental requirement for our statistics to work and to be analysed correctly. So, let's say now, let's look at our fruit bowl that we did before. This time, instead of five apples and four oranges, we now got 50 apples and 40 oranges. It's, big, it's a big fruit basket. And again, we're interested in three fruits are chosen at random. What is the probability of selecting any two apples? Okay, well, we set up this fraction like we did previously. Okay, so here we can see we've got our, we want two apples out of five, one out of four, Okay, and three out of a possible nine. So that's our result, what we achieved the first time we did it in our last video. Now this is the result for this current problem. There it is. So, but multiplying by 10, we can see, yes, the probability has changed. Now each time, I'm going to increase the population of our fruit bowl. So now, we've got a population of 900 in our fruit bowl. And we've still got, we've got, 500 apples and 400 oranges. I'm still keeping the same proportion of apples and oranges. I haven't changed that. I'm just increasing my population. So let's increase the population again. Here we go. So now 9,000 uh, uh, pieces of fruit in the fruit bowl. And you can start to see what's happening to our probability numbers. They're roughly 41%, but they seem to be going down at the moment. Okay, let's increase the population again. Well, now we've got 90,000 fruit. Wow, it's enough to feed a country. Small country. And even bigger. Look at that. Now, what's happening to our probability numbers? Well, they st seem to be trending towards a particular value. Okay? They're changing less and less. So, as the population approaches to some large, large amount, then this ratio, the probability, trends towards a certain value. 
Now, what is that value equivalent to? And this is what we want to, to uh, make a connection with. Have a look at this. This is the binomial distribution, okay, of selecting for three trials, selecting three fruit, and we have a population of selecting an apple, uh, a probability of selecting apple of five ninths. Well, there's five out of nine as a ratio proportion for probability of, of selecting an apple. And we're interested in doing that twice, two apples. Okay, so it's very similar to binomial distribution. And in fact, we can see the probabilities are the same. So what are we concluding? Well, for a large population, our distribution on P is approximately binomially distributed. Okay, and that's important. Uh, we're going to make that connection that it is, for a large population, it's roughly binomially distributed. So what is the expected value of the sample proportion p hat? All right. So if we take the expected value of p hat, well, really we're thinking about the expected value of the number of which we're trying to observe divided by the sample population, the sample amount. Now, using our linear combination, the one on n comes out and we just want the expected value of our discrete random variable x. Where x, what we saw is, yes, that's right, binomially distributed as we had seen in the, the problem. Now, the expected value of uh, x, our random variable, is n times p. Now, remember that from studying binomial distribution? Absolutely. So now we can see p's are going to cancel out. And there we have it. The mean or well, the average sample proportion is in fact the same as the population proportion. And that's what we observed here, wasn't it? We could see that the population proportion was this amount and the average value from our probability table was also the same amount. So that's the expected value. It's like the mean. What about the variance? Well, the variance of the sample proportion is the variance of the random variable x divide the sample size. Okay. Now, using our linear combination on our, the variance of a random variable, we're going to have a 1 on n squared coming out the front. And our variance of a binomial distribution, a uh, uh, discrete random variable, is this. The n times the p times the 1 minus p. And we end up with that for our variance, and we take the square root, and we get our standard deviation. Very good. Now, they are important rules to remember. And we're going to be needing them for the next part. Well done. Okay.